Good morning. Good morning. It's good to be here this morning. You know, we've looked forward to this time for 13 weeks. Or I have. Maybe you have too. So it's just good to be here in the same place together. And it doesn't matter whether you're wearing a mask or not. We're just here to celebrate our risen Christ and what he's done for us. And we love each other. We care about each other. And we're here again to celebrate our Lord and Christ. So we have been looking forward to being here. Um, we, I, <laughs> we're especially grateful to be able to honor our graduates today, and they'll be coming forward a little bit later on during the service as it's listed in the program, but we're uh, grateful that we can celebrate uh, their accomplishments. And so um, just remember that um, we've all been in that place before, haven't we? Trying to decide what comes next, trying to figure out our next step. So just remember them throughout not only this service, but uh, in the weeks to come as they make that transition to the next place in their life. I want to give a special thanks to uh, Jeff Milliken, Samantha Sprinkle, uh, and our office staff that's really worked hard at keeping everybody connected and, and keeping the Facebook and the YouTube things going so that we could be uh, worshiping together but not all in the same place. And I'm just grateful for them. Charles Miller, our uh, custodian, set up this room primarily for us uh, today or for the next weeks to come. So we're grateful for Charles. And also thankful to our minister and council that's kind of piloted us along through um, these COVID-19 days. But again, we're just glad to be in this place. Uh, your bulletin insert, perhaps you've already seen some of those announcements and read through those. But I do want to just make uh, mention that there is an uh, open invitation for all of you to come if you're available and want to uh, pray in our worship room. Uh, that would be Monday through Friday from from 9 to noon, um, you can come. You can even come between 9 and 12. I'm sure our office staff will let you in if you just want to come and sit and be in the worship room. We've had a few people in this last week that have come and done that. That doesn't mean you have to. We can pray from wherever we are. But if you feel like you'd like to come and just sit in the worship room, you're more than invited to do so. Our minister and council is going to meet right after worship today in the fellowship hall. And you can see monthly meeting will be convening this Wednesday. Um, and depending on the number of people, we'll start out in the fellowship hall. So we might move to a, a larger room if necessary, but we'll be there at 10 p uh, 7 p.m. on the 10th. So come and join us for our, month our monthly business, which is really our, uh, about three months business. Right, John uh, Lawrence? So we'll be talking about that. Okay. And please note, Becky Coltrane wanted me to say something about the Father's Day bulletins. This is a long-standing tradition here at Archdale Friends, and so if you'd like to make a contribution um, in honor of your father and memory of your father, uh, there's some uh, forms back at the back that you can pick one of those up and take them home. They're also been uh, sent out online and, and probably will be again, and you can uh, fill those out in that capacity as well. I forgot to order of worship. Not really. Let us pray. Jesus, it is in your joy that we gather in this place. It is in your power and in your might and your Son's name that we are here to give thanks for what you've done for us, to pause and to remember the events that have transpired throughout our country these last 13 weeks and these last 10 days especially. We are one nation under God, indivisible. So may we join together, not only as a gathered body, but as a people to love, to care, and to respect one another. Fill our hearts this day, O oh Lord, with your peace and with your power. 
to renew us, to refresh us, to restore us in the ways of Christ. Help us to celebrate what you've truly given to us today. Amen. Beck is going to come and share both of her songs at this time. When Charlene asked me um, to sing today, the focus of the meeting, besides us getting together, I guess, for the first time in a long time, but the main focus today is to honor the graduates that are here. And so we were trying to find something that would speak to the changes that they're going to be making in uh, the next few years, uh, as Rusty mentioned, determining what path they're going to follow. And so we came up with two songs, Where Could I Go? Because I think we all need to be rooted in God. And then Gentle Shepherd. Um, it speaks to the graduates, but with what we've all been through in the last few weeks, I think it's going to speak to all of us. So I hope you can listen to the words and maybe take something home with you from these songs. <laughs> Thank you. 
you, Becky. You know, we're not supposed to shout. We're not supposed to sing. So when I was a little child, I learned a song that said, if you're happy and you know it, you can... If you're happy and you know it, you can... Okay, so let's clap again. Are you happy? That might be a little childish, but at least we'll participate. The perkin started growing back in the bulletin. And I hope that you've looked at those, or that you will look at those, and you'll take those home and with you and take them to heart and remember those individuals that are listed there. There's really been not three deaths in the meeting, but there's been three acquaintances here at RCL Friends that have passed away in the last few few days, few weeks. Of course, Jim Hancock and Joanna Hudson um, funerals are connected to RCL Friends. Uh, Mike Cook's brother-in-law, uh, John Schillinger, uh, he passed away in the state of Colorado. We've also asked that you uh, remember to pray for wisdom and guidance as businesses reopen and congregations. This has just been such an unusual time. We just pray that they continue to have success in their businesses too. We ask you to pray for peace and healing. And probably the ones here at our sale friends that need our thoughts and prayers. Uh, Jan Bolden is still facing some difficult times with her bacterial infection and she has some other complications going on as well. Aubrey Whit and Craig. Craig's here someplace. Stick your hand up, Craig. Yeah, he's over here. Good to see you today, Craig. And Dot, you're here today too. How long has it been since you've been with us, Dot? It's been a long time. Yeah, it has been. Yeah, well, it's good to see you today. Good to have you here. I've got printed in the bulletin a time of prayer. And so I ask that we just take a moment, a minute or two, and if you'd like to stand and pray for something that's on your heart, whether that be our nation, the death of George Floyd, our learning to get along and respect one another better, or for our prayer concerns, I just ask that you stand and, and utter a prayer. Or you can do that audibly and silently right where you sit. But let's just take a minute here in our midst of our worship and to pray.
you. You know, growing up on the farm, um, my grandfather and my brothers used to say, you know, a little drought now and then, a little hard time now and then on the crops made them that much stronger. And so going through some difficult times can make us stronger. And let's allow that to happen in your heart, in your soul, for Jesus Christ. Uh, Gail Lampus is going to come forward, and she's going to uh, recognize and read the names of our graduates. Now, graduates, if you don't know you're a graduate, and you see your picture up here, that means you need to come forward and just stay up here till uh, Debbie's going to give you uh, uh, Debbie Butler's going to give you your gift. <coughs>
I've traveled soccer for the last 10 years, often serving as captain. He was also a starter on two state cup championship teams. Jack was also a member of Trinity's tennis team from 2017-2020. He served as co-captain, earned the award of MVP, all-conference distinction, and the coaches award. Jack was also a member of the conference doubles season champions and conference doubles champion. Academically, Jack completed Trinity High School in the top 10% of his class, was a member of the Beta Club and the Academic Honor Society. He graduated with 30 hours of college credit from Randolph, Cam Randolph Community College from classes Jack took along with high school studies. He is a member of the RCC Phi Beta Kappa Honor Society for students with a GPA 3.5 or higher. During the summers following his freshman year and sophomore year in high school, Jack volunteered with COAT and the Run 5 B5 program. Jack will attend North Carolina State University in the fall. His major is still undecided. Paul Statina. Paul is a graduate of Penn Griffin School of the Arts, where he studied music and the choral arts, was president of the sports club. Paul volunteered his time at the YWCA with the ELS program to teach English to Latino Americans. He will be attending Appalachian State University to study mathematics and the actuarial study sciences. Paul has been accepted as a member of the Watauga community, which centers itself in community service in Boone, North Carolina. Sarah Ann Thompson. Sarah is the daughter of Mark and Heather Thompson and the granddaughter of the late Don and Mary Ann Bowers and the late James and Patricia Thompson. Sarah received her diploma from Wheatmore High School while at Wheatmore, Sarah was a member of the Voices of Valor and the Tri-M Choral Honor Society. Sarah's Voices of Valor and her chorus were selected to perform for the governor at the state capitol. She was also chosen to perform in an all-state chorus and performed in New York City at the Cathedral of St. John the Divine. Sarah coached summer swim for three years. She is an active member of Apex Student Ministries at Hayworth Wesleyan Church in High Point. Sarah received the Newberry Presidential Scholarship and will be attending Southern Wesleyan University in Central South Carolina in the fall. She plans to major in psychology. After receiving her undergraduate degree, Sarah plans to obtain her master's in speech pathology. We have two college graduates, John Andrews. John is the son of Herb and Shandell Andrews, the grandson of Lee and Doris Andrews, and the late Carl and Nancy Montpater. John graduated from North Carolina State University with the honor of magna cum laude. He majored in agri agricultural business management with minors in economics and crop science. While at St NC State, John participated in Friends Campus Ministries and Agricultural Business Management Club. John has accepted the position of Associate Operations Manager at Terra Green Precision Landscapes in Charlotte, North Carolina. Caleb Duran Grissom, Caleb is the son of Scott and Rhonda Grissom and the grandson of Julia Grissom Brown, Johnny Brown, and the late Randy Grissom, Barbara Mercer, and the late Bobby Mercer. He graduated from Appalachian State University earning a degree in criminal justice. Caleb plans to pursue a career with the Virginia State Police. Congratulations, graduates. Graduates right behind you are uh, gift bags. 
And uh, we also uh, thought it might be interesting and good to do in this pandemic time to give them each a wrap roll of toilet paper. <laughs> so please just select your gift and you can go back to your seat. But let's have a prayer before you go, okay? <clears throat> Our Heavenly Father, we're just so thankful for the accomplishments of these young men and women. We're thankful for their parents, their grandparents, where their roots began. So we've come here to recognize those accomplishments in their lives to this day. And we pray for a blessing, the power of the risen Lord, to fall freshly upon them as they venture out into the world. As they become your person, your people, wherever they go. May you continue to whisper in their ear that they can know inwardly the things that you would have them to accomplish, the things that you would have them to do for fellow men and women, for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. We just ask for you to bless them, to enrich them, and to rise up in their hearts, O oh Lord, as they go out and serve you. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah, go ahead and get your gift one by one, and thank you for being a part of today and our Field Friends meeting. All the gift bags are the same. There's no surprises in them. They're all the same. <laughs> and thanks to the Christian Education Committee for getting today's activities together to recognize our graduates. And thank you for coming. Friend and Dockery is going to come and read our scripture lesson this morning. chapter 3. I'd like to announce that there will be a group FaceTime for all the young adults that have been active in our young adult ministry over the last three years. There will be a group FaceTime on Tuesday evening and uh, I'll get a hold of each one of you by then so we can discuss some things before monthly meeting. Um, our passage today is found in 1 Samuel Chapter 3, verse 4, this is dealing with the call of Samuel. Samuel lived about a thousand years before Jesus, around 1040 BCE or 1040 before the Common Era. He was the last judge of Israel before King Saul, before the monarchy was established within Israel. What makes Samuel important, what makes this passage very important is that the word of God had not been heard much during this time because of the people's idolatry. God hadn't been speaking to many folks. And so when he talked to Saul, when, excuse me, when he called Samuel, when he talks to Samuel, it's a big deal because he hadn't done that in a long, long time at this point. Samuel chapter 3, verse 4. Then the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am. He called me, and I I didn't call, Eli replied. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. And once again, the Lord called Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am. You call me. And I didn't call my son. He replied, Go back and lay down. Now Samuel did not know yet the Lord, because the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. And once again, for the third time, the Lord called Samuel. And he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. Then Eli understood that the Lord was calling the boy, and he told Samuel, Go and lie down, and if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. 
And the Lord came and stood there and called as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel responded, Speak, for your servants listen. Thank you, Brandon. And Brandon's right. The Lord had not been speaking to people much at all, the children of Israel. They'd been rebuking God and not going in the direction that God had wanted them to go. They weren't at least hearing what God was saying. They'd kind of gone on their own path, kind of taken their own course. And um, the Lord had just been silent. So it's the whispers of God. When he whispers in your ear, when he whispers to your heart, pay attention. Because he still speaks. He hasn't stopped. Pay attention. The Lord lays things on all of our hearts. We just recognize Dave graduates. And he's speaking to their hearts and how they should be engaged in the world. And what they should be doing for him. He speaks to all of us, not just graduates. And so we need to put on ears that we can hear. Whispers from God. Through all the COVID 19 and the events stimulated in Minneapolis. And a display of unrest by some people, but also peaceful protests by others. You know, it's given me pause this week on several different levels. But a pause to stop and reflect, to pray, to listen, to listen how God is speaking to my heart. And what's my responsibilities as a child of God today? Or any day, I fully believe that God continues to love us. He continues to be alive and active in us. And continues to whisper, just as he did to Samuel. But we got to listen. we got to pay attention. You know, many, perhaps many mothers, with, uh, when they bake cookies or when they're preparing a meal, it doesn't seem like... They have to really call the children in to eat. They just know when to show up. You ever notice that, mothers? That when there's food on the table, everybody just kind of shows up? Now sometimes if you're having a big meal, you do an invitation. Say it's going to start at 12 o'clock and people show up. But when you got food on the table, or at least when my mom made chocolate chip cookies, she didn't have to tell us they were done. You know, we just kind of knew in our hearts. There were five boys, and so we all just kind of knew when those cookies were going to be done. And we just showed up. Well, maybe our stomach was growling, I don't know. Maybe that's what was the voice was coming from. But we just kind of showed up. But yet, when there were chores to do, and she wanted to call us in from the basketball court that we had up in the hay mail, or she wanted to call us in from playing softball in the side yard, what'd you say? What was that? Sometimes we just hear what we want to hear in the world today. Or when God speaks, we sometimes want to kind of push it away. We really don't want to pay attention all the time to what God is telling us. Or what's in our heart. You know, God speaks to your heart. He's put things in your heart. And so that's where we need to listen. Samuel was the son of Elkanah and Hannah. <clears throat> Hannah had been praying for a son for a long time. She made the annual trip to the to sacrifice. And when she would come up to Eli year after year, she would have the same prayer. Lord, give me a son. She was barren. She wasn't able to conceive. Other people made fun of her because people brought their child to be dedicated, but she didn't have a child. Elkanah had another wife, and that wife had a child so there was competition but in Hannah's heart she was hurting she didn't have any child and so she petitioned God and she said God if you will give me a child 
I'll dedicate him to the Lord. And finally, the prayer resulted in a child for Hannah. And she takes this child to be dedicated. And that's the scripture text where we come today. When he's about 12 years old, Hannah has dedicated him to the Lord, and he is there in the temple. And he doesn't know who is calling him. This was the vow that Hannah made before the Lord. Lord Almighty, if you will only look on your servant's misery and remember me and not forget your servant, but give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life. And then in verse 28, we read these words, a little bit beyond today's scripture text. Oh, no, the end of first, in the verse, uh, chapter 1. So now I give him, your son Samuel, to the Lord. For his whole life he will be given over to the Lord, and Samuel worshipped the Lord there. And then in chapter 2, there's a great prayer by Hannah. If you want to read her prayer, it's right there available for you in chapter 2, before the dedication and the scripture that was read today by Brandon in chapter 3. God continues to lead and guide those who listen. You don't have to be an adult to hear the voice of God or the calling of God in your heart. It may not always be an audible voice. Sometimes there's just something in your heart you know you should do. And it leads you. Make sure you follow it. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Eli was getting on in his age as night approached, and he was having trouble seeing. And Samuel, he was lying down near the Ark of the Covenant. A very sacred place. The Ark of the Covenant contained the Ten Commandments that Moses would have gotten. And he was laying down next to that when he heard the voice of the Lord. You don't need to be an adult to hear God. To go about doing his work. You don't need money in your pocket to hear the Lord's call. You just need a listening heart. A heart after God. A confidence and a trust in yourself and in God to follow what he has put right here. I'm sure all of us in this room, or maybe many of us in this room, have had a leading at some point in time of our life where we think we need to be doing something. Going and visiting somebody. Sending, giving a call. Or stopping by somebody's house. The Lord speaks to your heart. And Eli helped Samuel discern that call. He helped him. And we are gathered in this room to help one another determine our call. What we're supposed to be doing for Christ. And what we're supposed to be doing for God. And one another. God continues to be active and alive. What has he placed in your heart? Graduates, what is he telling you? May we have ears, too, to hear. All of you are a child of God. He has put his desires in you. Give him your attention. Give him your best. Listen for his whisper. Follow it with a passion. Live your life after God. Live God's dream. Where would we be if Abraham had not heeded the call of God to start a new nation and people? Who would it be if Daniel had not heeded God and threw open the shuttered doors and prayed to the Lord? What would it be if Jesus' his disciples had stayed in hiding after his death and never became active? What would it be if someone had not invented the first wheel? 
Where would we be if Thomas Edison hadn't had given up on making electricity? Where would we be if Henry Ford had not ever made that first automobile or started manufacturing cars? Where would we be if Orville and Wendell Wright had not chose to learn how to fly? What did God put in their heart a zeal and a zest for? Where would we be if Martin Luther had not challenged the religious leaders of his day and started a religious reformation? A Quaker pharmacist, Mr. Hires, invented root beer. How many of you like root beer? You like root beer? He invented it. Where would we be without root beer? I like root beer floats, a little ice cream with it. That's top. Early friends, Lucretia Mott's prison ministry, got women right to be able to vote. Mary Dyer, Elizabeth Fry, Ann Hutchison. Where would we be if the Lord had not spoken to them or they had not listened to what the Lord is saying? How many of you like chocolate? Any of you like chocolate? A Quaker philanthropist, Mr. Cadbury, Henry Cadbury, invented chocolate. What would be if people didn't listen to what God was telling them? How many of you like cordless drills? You men out there, you like cordless drills? Ah, I do. New kitchen appliances? How many of you got them, ladies? They're wonderful. People following after a zest and a zeal to make the world better. Medical technology. Look at the advancements. Someone had to do that. Justice for all people. Are we on the same page? Do we love our neighbor as we love ourselves? Doesn't matter what color. What race? What creed? Do we? God has put his hope in every person in this room. Let's pay attention to what he's saying. I want each of you to do something for me this morning. I know it's in the middle of the sermon. But I want you to repeat this phrase as a whisper. You know, we're not supposed to shout. Let's be quiet. But I want you to just act like this is a whisper from God. And I want you to repeat this phrase, I'm a child of God and he loves me. I'm a child of God and he loves me. Now add this to it. I'm a child of God, he loves me and speaks to me. I'm a child of God, he loves me and speaks to me. Now raise your voice up just a little. And in a normal speaking voice, say that same line. I am a child of God. He loves me and speaks to me. I'm a child of God. He loves me and he speaks to me. Now Samuel heard that three times, a fourth time. The Lord spoke to Samuel before it really set in his heart. The Lord speaks to you, friend. He speaks to all of us. Graduates, he's speaking to you. Are you listening? Are you paying attention? Or are you just kind of floating out there, going your own way? Doing your own thing? The Lord speaks to all of us. May we put our ears on and hear. Throughout the New and the Old Testament, God whispered to his people, Myron Osberger, a Mennonite author, wrote a book titled Caring Enough to Hear. How well do we hear? Hannah, in the scripture lesson this morning, cried out to God and cried out to God and cried out to God and he heard her prayers. And if you remember the Egyptians, when they were enslaved, well, I mean the uh, Hebrews, when they were enslaved by the Egyptians for 400 years, they started crying out. And the Lord heard their prayers. So it kind of works both ways. 
when we listen and God puts something on our heart and we return the favor and pray, things can happen. Do you obey the voice in the calling? You know, when I was a, a child, um, my mom sometimes would use that phrase, go sit and time out. Any of, you, any of you parents ever use that? Go sit and time out. Go to your room. Go be by yourself. Go think about what you've just done, which wasn't always a good thing. But I think we also need to do a time in. We need to have a time in with God. So we can hear what he is actually saying to us. Find a place where you can have a time in. You know, now God may not be calling you to Africa. You know, the Lord doesn't say, Rusty, go over to Africa today. He doesn't do that. I don't hear that voice. He doesn't tell me to go to Antarctica and start a new mission. But if there's something in my heart that I'm passionate about, and I feel it's from God. We need to act upon it. A good spiritual exercise might be a time in. Time in to listen to the dream God has put in you. And God dreams bigger than my dreams. He dreams bigger than our dreams. But he has hope for you. And he's placed that in you. So let it be born as we pay attention to what the Lord has for you. And as Brandon said, Samuel was the last judge. Now if you've ever read the book of Judges, there are several judges that are listed. Maybe the one we might remember most is, is Gideon. He was one of the judges. Deborah was one of the judges. Ehud was one of the judges. And so these years of judges, and then it comes down, they're not listening, they're not listening, the children of Israel, and it comes down to Samuel. And the Lord's voice has been pretty quiet for the last decade or so. And Samuel hears. And Samuel becomes the transition between the judges for the kingdom of Israel and the king. You know, Saul's the first king. And then on down the line comes David. And so Samuel was that in-between guy. Sometimes we need to be able to hear both sides. And Samuel was able to do that and to move the nation in a different direction. Or his world, or his people, or his friends. And as God lives in you, friends, and you listen to God, make sure that you're on his page. Matthew 13 talks about the parable of the four soils. And it says this about the most productive soil. You know, there was four kinds of soils. And there was only one that was really productive. And it says this about the one productive soil. The one who receives the seed that falls on the ground is the person who hears and understands. So we have to not only hear, we have to do our best in understanding. And Samuel did that. I like really the phrase, the way the Message Bible says this um, part in Matthew chapter 13 of the parable of the four soils. So let me read that to you as well. Some seeds fell on the good earth and produced a harvest beyond his wildest dream. I like that. Beyond his wildest dream. We don't know the dreams God has for you, for our still friends, for our community. But when we pay attention, those dreams can come to fruition. You are his child. So let us pay attention. Bill Hybels, a Christian writer and pastor, wrote the article titled, The Power of a Whisper. And I want to end with this. 
um, Bill Hybels was in the first or second grade, and I guess he maybe um, he had some difficulty uh, sitting still or maybe listening. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, all what he isn't doing any explanation about um, his um, hesitancy to hear and to listen. But she asked him to read this poem and to memorize it. And it's a poem about Samuel. And so here it is. Oh, give me Samuel's ear, an open ear, O oh Lord, alive and quick to hear, a whisper of thy word, like him to answer to thy call and to obey thee first of all. So hearing and responding are important. The Lord whispered to Noah, build an ark. To Moses, hold up your staff and cross the Red Sea on dry land. To Daniel, pray to me only, and he throws open the shutters. To Zechariah in the New Testament, you will have a son. To Paul, build my church. And a lady in the New Testament, so close to the needy. You are a child of God. He has or will give you ideas, dreams, and a calling that belongs to you. Early in my life, I ran away from that calling. I pushed it away. I didn't want to pay attention. I wanted to play baseball. I wanted to do something else. I wanted to stay at home in Greentown, Indiana. So I'm encouraging each of you, and especially these graduates, to listen to what's in your heart. To what God has placed in your heart. And follow it. 2 Corinthians 9 8. And God is able to bless you abundantly, so in all things at all times, having all that you need, you abound in every good work. Let's work for all people, in all places, at all times. Not just for ourselves, but let's work together in unity, in peace, for greater days.
be dead by this. Um, and at that point, when I thought about that, I thought, well, I'm going to check the dead. Um, and I am not know that, but I will. Mm-hmm. But yes, I am so proud of my child, but I am so thankful to the people in this room that have helped us to, to be there for Noah and to guide Noah. And when I look around and I see the faces that I remember that very day, and they're the very ones that you know, he's, he's, he's been close to now for his 18 years. And some of you have reached out to him during this pandemic and, and have said to him, what do you need to talk about? What, how can I help you? And so um, I think this was very well his first, but it was more of a, yeah, Jenna, I think you guys have done well. But without our children's meeting, I don't know how well we would have done. So I want to thank everybody. Um, his accomplishments are not just to keep us there because of the things that he's learned here. And because of his love for the Lord, um, he started a Bible study over the pandemic with his um, friends. And so, you know, little things like that just have been big, big things. And these kids have, um, they just have earned the world. And I'm so thankful for everybody and the hands that you put out for them along the way. It's funny you say that because the girls up there reading all these names. And I looked up, and two of the oldest ones up there are the two of the okay? And I'm not sure about some of you high school kids that are graduating. Congratulations on you guys, okay? Uh, if you've learned anything, you've learned how to overcome an obstacle. Consider this an obstacle, okay? It's the first of many more to come. It doesn't end here, okay? Go out in the world, make a difference, okay? And always continue, always remember to, to give back, to give back to where you come from. Never forget where you came from. Okay, it's important. Keep God in your heart. And remember to call you mom. Remind us that you love them, okay? And those of you who will go away. But I look around this room and I see for some of you, I'm not sure about the rest of you, but for some of you, we're starting. Okay, it started right here at Wheat Friends Preschool. Okay? The Orlando was a teacher. She up on my shell. Okay. <laughs> my wife, Rhonda. Chandler, who called Gloria. She's a teacher. All about the same. She cried. Oh, I'm going to be crying. 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 But uh, again, congratulations. Go out and make a difference. Okay. And just remember to call. We love you. We're proud of you. And God will stay great.
Do you want us to read it somewhere? You don't want it in the mail. Thank you, thank you for asking, Jerry. There's offering plates at each uh, exit door. And so when you leave, if you do have an offering that you'd like to um, leave today, you can put those in those plates. So. Denise Barnes is that back in the back. Turn around, you can see where her hand is, and she does have some of those surveys if you'd like one to, to fill it out. Okay. Are all hearts and minds clear? Let us pray. Lord, we're thankful for life. The life that you've given to us here on earth. We're thankful for creative minds that use their gifts and talents to make the world a better place. We're so thankful for these graduates that we recognize here this morning. We love them, we care about them and their future. There's many other graduates beyond these walls around the world, around our nation, and around Randolph County. Lord, you know their needs. You know their questions that they're asking. You know the times that they are facing. Continue to lay your hands upon them and give whispers to their hearts. Help them to hear how they can be your people that love and care for all. That is ready to instill justice and peace to every human life. And I thank you that these graduates are ready to take, so to speak, if I may, the bull by the horn and move forward, not only in their lives, but in the lives for everyone. Help us all to hear inwardly what you have for us. I pray for ministry and counsel, for wisdom, for guidance, and all that you have planned for Archdale Friends. In your name we pray, amen.